so let's discuss about alternating series let's assume that you have a series like this okay and where a n is positive so now here for this if i take minus 1 to the power of n okay and this is what we are going to call alternating series you know why is it called alternating series because if you write the summation it's like you'll have a1 minus a2 plus a3 minus a4 plus a5 minus a6 plus and so on so what we are doing alternatively we are taking plus and minus so that is why it is called alternating series okay now we would like to know whether this this series is going to be convergent or not okay so there are two types of convergence for this alternating series so the types are like let's say you take this series summation n equals to 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power whole power n by n square okay and this is this is an alternating series here suppose if i take absolute value for the sequence a n I mean, suppose if I consider uh, summation of modulus of a n. Okay, it means for the entire expression, I'm taking the modulus here. So if I do so, what do you get here? If I take the absolute value, so one to infinite modulus of minus one power n by n square. So this is nothing but summation n equals to one to infinite. We get one by n square. And what do you know about this series? What can you say about summation n equals 1 to infinite 1 by n square? Yeah, so this series is convergent. Okay, so since this series is convergent, so this series is convergent, right? So it means if I take the corresponding absolute sequence, so this becomes convergent here. So this is the alternating series. If you observe that, summation n equals to 1 to infinite minus 1 to the power of n over n square so this is the given series right and the corresponding absolute series is going to be absolute series i mean just you remove that uh, minus 1 to the power of n in other words you are taking the absolute uh, uh, sequence in it not that minus 1 power uh, n so n equals to 1 to infinite 1 by n square okay so since this is convergent so since this is convergent we are going to say that this series is absolutely convergent so this series is absolutely convergent all right now i'll give you one more series tell me about that series summation n equals to 1 to infinite let's say if i take minus 1 to the power of n over n cube plus 1 what can you say about this series no here when you when you have alternating series you should not say just convergent. So what can you say about this summation? Absolutely convergent. Yeah, so this is absolutely convergent. Why? Because if you take the corresponding absolute series, so that's going to be convergent. Therefore, this is absolutely convergent. Okay. Now let me take one more. Uh, suppose if I take summation n equals 1 to infinite, let's say minus 1 power n over n. So what can you say about this? Is it absolutely convergent? No. No. So it's very clear that. So it's very clear that this is not absolutely convergent. Why? Because we know that summation n equals to one to infinite one by n. We know this summation is divergent. Okay. So since this this uh, series is divergent, we can say that. The original series is not absolutely convergent, that we can say. Okay, so now the, the, now the corresponding absolute series is not convergent. Now what about this, uh, what about this series? Is it convergent? So try to understand the question. So the corresponding absolute series is not convergent. Therefore, it is not absolutely convergent. So how about the original series? Is it convergent? What is it? No. So are you thinking that it is not convergent? Yes, sir. Okay. So now we need to know about this uh, alternating series. Is it convergent or not? Okay. So now to check the convergence of alternating series, we have a theorem. Okay. And the theorem is here. So this is what we call alternating series test or Leibniz theorem. Okay. 
So let us try to understand what it says. So it says that this alternating series is converted if these three conditions holds. What are those three conditions? So initially, uh, except that minus one to the power of n, so the rest of the top needs to be positive. Okay, so a, a n has to be positive. And one more condition is that this sequence must be uh, non decreasing. Oh, sorry, non increasing. You can see that a n is greater than or equal to a n plus one. It means the sequence is decreasing. So it must be a decreasing sequence. And this is second condition. And one more condition is limit of that sequence must become zero. Okay. And we will also discuss proof of this theorem. But anyway, first let us try to apply this theorem. Later we will go into the proof. Okay. So this theorem tells me that if alternating series satisfies all these three conditions, then it is going to be convergent. Okay. Now uh, let me take this problem that is summation summation n equals to 1 to infinite minus 1 power n over n okay so here if you see that a n equal to what is a n that is 1 by n you can see that it is anyway positive okay and this is positive for all n belongs to natural numbers so we are done with the first condition so the first condition satisfied the Leibniz test and the second one to, to see the second one I need to see what is a n plus 1 that is 1 over n plus 1 and I need to see what is a n so a n is nothing but 1 over n okay so now what is the relation between them you know that n plus 1 is greater than n so this implies uh, 1 over n plus 1 is less than 1 over n okay so this this states that a n plus 1 is less than a so now it also satisfies the second condition that is a n is greater than or equal to a n plus 1 okay of course the same the same one you can write it like this a n is greater than a n plus 1 so the second condition is also satisfied how about the third one so the third one is limit n goes to infinite a n that is limit n goes to infinite so limit n goes to infinite uh, 1 by n and what is its limit zero. zero yeah so it's zero therefore so therefore we can conclude that uh, given series so given series satisfies all conditions of Leibniz test. Okay, so it satisfies all conditions of Leibniz test. Therefore, we can conclude that the given summation is n equals to 1 to infinite minus 1 to the power of n by n. This is convergent. Okay, so this is an interesting series. Here the original series is convergent, but the absolute series is not convergent. Okay, so this kind of convergence we call conditionally convergent. Absolute value series is not convergent. Okay, and moreover, the series is convergent, then we say the series is conditionally convergent. So this is an example of a conditionally convergent series. Alright, so let's go with one more problem. Now I'll give you summation n equals to 1 to infinite, uh, 1 over root n. So, sorry, I gave you absolute one only so let me take the conditional alternating series so this is the alternating series now try to discuss about its convergence my first question is it absolutely convergent no sir no so it is not absolutely convergent so it's very clear so this is not absolutely convergent okay so is it conditionally convergent so to, to know that we need to check all three conditions of the Leibniz test. So all of you check the three conditions of the Leibniz test and let me know whether it satisfies or not. Second yes, conditions. Conditional. It satisfies. All conditions. Yeah. 
So you can see that here a n, a n is nothing but 1 by root n. This is any way greater than or equal to 0 for all n belongs to natural numbers. And the second condition, you know that n plus 1 is greater than or equal to n. Of course, you can write strictly. So this implies square root of n plus 1 is greater than or equal to square root of n. So this implies 1 over root n plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over root n. So this says that a is 1 is less than or equal to a. So this is true for all n belongs to natural numbers. Okay, so this series is, I mean this series satisfies first two conditions. Now let me check about the last condition that's limit and goes to infinity a n. So that is limit n goes to infinite 1 over root n and you know that it will be 0. Okay, therefore uh, original series satisfies all conditions of the Leibniz test. Yeah, therefore we can conclude that summation, so summation n equals to 1 to infinite minus 1 to the power of n over root n, this is convergent. Okay, so we concluded using this test. Okay, now, uh, so now uh, what can you say? It's not absolutely convergent, but it is convergent. Therefore, so what, what shall we conclude? We say that, conditionally this is, yeah, conditionally convergent. So this is conditionally. Okay, now let's, let's look at more problems. Okay. So the question here is, which of the following uh, series convergent or divergent? <coughs> and also state that whether they are conditionally convergent or absolutely convergent. Yeah. So how about the first one? So let me take the first problem. So I hope even if I look at uh, uh, the nth term, like if I if I compare this as summation minus one to the power of n plus one times a n, okay, the corresponding uh, absolute series is going to be summation n by ten whole power n, right? What do you think about it? Is it going to be convergent or divergent? Limit zero, sir. Limit zero? Are you sure? Divergent, sir. Limit in. Yeah. So if you take n over 10 whole power n. All right. Now let me see the limit. Limit n goes to infinite a n. Okay. So limit n goes to infinite. What you have is n by 10 whole power n. So what about its limit? So now you can do one thing. You can actually take uh, y equal to uh, n over 10 whole power n. Okay, so from this ln y becomes n times of ln of n over 10. So it's now now it is easy to observe that it's like infinite into infinite. Okay, even here also it is easy to observe. It's looking like infinite to the power of infinite. Okay, so finally it goes to infinite. The value goes to infinite. So you can easily see that the limit of this series is sequence is going to be infinite. So the limit of nth term is not zero. Therefore, we can conclude that by nth term test, by nth term test, we can conclude that summation minus one to the power of n plus one and n by ten whole power n. This is divergent. So once if it is divergent, now nothing to talk about conditional convergence and absolute convergence or not. It's divergent, that's it. Okay. And remember one thing, this nth term test is applicable for all series. While discussing nth term test, we did not discuss that a n has to be positive or not. It is applicable for all. All kind of series. Okay. Limit of nth term is non-zero. We can directly say that. 
uh, the original series is divergent. So therefore, this series is divergent. Okay. Now let me take problem two. So how about this? So what do you think? Is it absolutely convergent? Okay. Then if you are not able to uh, conclude it, then you can do one thing. You can apply ratio test here. Okay. And you may ask me one thing. You discussed ratio test only for positive top series. Then how can we take it for uh, uh, this alternating series? Yeah. So the answer is, I am not going to consider the alternating series. I will consider the corresponding absolute value series from that I conclude. Okay. So here, the corresponding uh, absolute value series is summation n equals to 1 to infinity, 10 power n over n power n. So first I want to see what is a n plus 1 over a n. And you know a n plus 1 here is 10 to the power of n plus 1 and n plus 1 whole power n. This times reciprocal of a n that is n power 10 over 10 power n. I hope this one can be uh, rewritten like this 10 times of n plus sorry n over n plus 1 whole power 10. Okay, now let us take the limit. So limit n goes to infinite. So limit n goes to infinite. This a n plus 1 over a n that equals limit n goes to infinite. This is 10. And you know, it, this one can be rewritten like this 1 over 1 plus 1 by n whole power 10 taking the n common in the numerator and denominator and cancelling it out. Okay, so this will be 10 times of 1 over 1 plus 0 whole power 1. So you got 10. So we got it is greater than 1. Alright, so when you when you get uh, the value is greater than 1, what can you conclude? An is divergent. Yeah. So the summation a n is divergent, correct. And, and you know one thing, here when you apply ratio test and root test for alternating series, we have an advantage here. So the advantage is that if we get the limit value, limit of a n plus 1 over a n, if it is less than 1, you can say it is absolutely convergent. And if it is greater than 1, you, we can conclude that it is divergent. And then no need of checking for whether the alternating series is convergent or not. Okay, so for that, let's write a small modification here. So instead of taking just a n plus 1 over a, let's take its absolute value. Okay, so I'm taking its absolute value. Anyway, if you take absolute value, you'll get the same thing. So therefore, so using, using ratio test, so using ratio test, we can conclude the given summation is divergent. So for root test and ratio test, we can take the absolute values in case of alternating series. All right. Now let's let's move for one more problem. So how about this one? Is it absolutely convergent or conditionally convergent or divergent? So try to conclude. And for your kind information here, ratio test and root test both will fail. And if the ratio test apply just the limit one of the number. So limit one of the number ratio test to use just say conclude three limit. Okay, so take directly. Convergent by n prime test. Convergent by n prime n term test. See, n term test can be used to say the series is divergent only. Using n term test, we can't conclude the series is convergent. Limit is zero, sir. So we can't okay. say it is convergent at the end. Yeah. So first it absolutely convergent out of the yes, sir. Out of the okay. Let me take the corresponding absolute series. If I take absolute value of this, convergent, sir. Which one is the? Is it conditionally or absolutely? Which one? 
Absolutely. Absolutely, Tanvaji. Oh, okay. Fine. So we have L and N by N, right? So I'd like to do one thing. I'd like to I'd like to apply logarithm. Oh, sorry, integral test. I'll go with integral test. So integral one to infinite. I'll have L and X over X into dx and the integration is going to be ln x whole square by 2 and limits are from 1 to infinity now are you still staying on the same decision absolutely convergent sir all hospital rule can be used ma meru all hospital rule they apply just to that सिरीज की सीक्वे की कंफ्यूज अवे सीक्वे लिमिट जीरो जीरो कन्वर्टे ग्यारंटी ले सो दिशे मैनस् दी वे जीरो फोर यू गेट इन फाइव सो दिस दिशेवल Minus one to the power of n plus one of ln n over n. This is not absolutely convergent. Okay, so this is not absolutely convergent. Why? Because using integral test, you can see that this is divergent. At the corresponding uh, absolute series is divergent. Okay. So now, okay, we came to know this is not absolutely convergent. Now we need to investigate: is the original series convergent? It means the alternating series convergent. Now we we need to apply alternating series test. So the alternating series test. So I'd like to apply alternating series test here. So here, if I look at a n, a n is actually l n of n over n. I can say that it is anyway positive for all n belongs to n. And we need to know whether uh, Is it decreasing function or not? But if I if I go like previously, I mean, uh, n plus one is greater than n. But here we can't go that way. You know why? Because you have l n over n. Okay, so in this case, the best thing is you better take the function f of x, which agrees with our sequence, which is nothing but Ln x over x. Now, so what do you do? Now, you take the derivative of this function. So, f dash of x that will be. Uh, so, what is the derivative now? X times the derivative of ln x, which is one by x, minus ln x times of the derivative of x, which is one over x squared. This is the derivative, right? And if I write it clearly, this is one minus ln x over x squared. Okay, and we know that this is going to be negative. This is going to be negative for all for all x greater than because at e it will be equal to one, so one minus one will get zero. So after e, its ln x value will be more more than one. So, so then it is going to be negative. So since we got f dash of x, f dash of x is negative uh, for all x greater than e. So we can say that the sequence a n, the sequence a n is decreasing, decreasing for all n greater than or equal to three. Okay, the bigger the number natural number bigger than e is three. So I'm taking three here. So this sequence is decreasing from three onwards. In other words, it satisfies this condition: a n plus one is less than or equal to a n, or all n greater than or equal to three. Okay, so the second condition is also satisfied. Now let's let's go to the last condition. Let's limit n goes to infinite a. N. And this is limit and goes to infinite. That would be ln n over n. 
Okay, now you can take an hospital group. Okay. So this is limit and goes to infinite. Since you got infinite by infinite form, so what do you do? You can actually see infinite by infinite form. So applying a loss pattern, you get one over n over one, and you know that this goes to zero. Okay, the th third condition is also satisfied. So the all three conditions of the of the alternating series test are satisfied here. First condition is this, and second condition and third condition. So therefore, conclusion is that summation n equals to one to infinite minus one to the power of n plus one of ln n over n is convergent. And moreover, we know that it is not absolutely convergent. Therefore, this convergence is conditional convergence. So, otherwise, that it ranges some initial ranges out there corresponding absolute value series. So, absolute value series integral test use chase and the divergent and tells it and they absolutely convergent at the car Okay, so next alternating series test use chase each and series convergent out to the level to the so work three conditions are there. Okay, a n greater than or equal to zero. Other one is a n plus one is less than or equal to a, and limit of a n is zero. So these three conditions we satisfy just cover the original series and the original alternating series are the convergent type. See the absolutely convergent Kadu cover the conditionally convergent. Okay, so I hope you understand. Okay, now let's think about this problem. Tell me about this problem. Is it convergent or divergent or absolutely convergent or conditionally convergent? Absolutely convergent. Absolutely convergent. How? Can someone else tell me? Okay, try to apply nth term test. Just apply nth term test and see. Divergent, sir. Yeah, why is it divergent? Limit is 3, sir. Yeah, so we can see that limit n goes to infinite a n. Okay, or absolute value of a n. So that is limit n goes to infinite. You know, this is 3 root n plus 1 over root n plus 1. And you know, this one can be rewritten like this limit n goes to infinite 3 plus 1 by root n over. 1 plus 1 by root n. Taking root n common and cancelling, you will get this. So this limit is nothing but 3 plus 0 over 1 plus 0. Therefore, it is 3. And it is not equal to 0. Okay. So since the limit of nth term is not 0, therefore, by using nth term test, so by using nth term test, we can conclude that the given series is divergent because limit of uh, a n is non zero. That's it. Now, no need of checking conditional or whatever. Okay. So, here is the theorem. Let us look at it. Absolute convergence test. So, if summation a n, then uh, a n means it need not, need not be uh, non-negative. Okay. So, they are talking about general series. So, if it is converges absolutely, then summation a n is convergent. Converges absolutely means what? They are saying that the summation mod a n is convergent. That implies summation a n is convergent. So that's what uh, the statement is talking about. So every absolutely convergent series is convergent. Okay. Now, what can you say about this series? I hope you can see it here. Sign n over n square. What is it? Convergence. Yeah, it is convergent, right? Because, because greater than two. Which is greater than two? By using P series test. Yeah, P series test you can apply five, but how about the sign n in the numerator? By comparison test, limit comparison. 
range if of you want to apply one. a parachute test n has to be uh, sorry the sign n has to be positive but you know sign n takes negative values also yes and minus you can't apply one. you can't apply comparison test here limit comparison test limit comparison also you can't apply because if you take 1 by n square you'll get sign of n so limit n goes to infinite sign n what can you conclude you know that is bounded but if that is not convergent limit of sign n as n goes to infinite does not exist so limit comparison test could apply only first of all we observe just that a n and n to the sign n over n square right? so it is positive it is not okay so this is this is not positive Okay, this is not completely positive. Let me write it like this. And the positive values this could be negative values could have this could be the sign and the negative. So we cannot apply comparison test, limit comparison test. But you can apply this theorem here. So what you can do is you can take absolute value of a n that equal to absolute value of sign of n. by n square so that's the thing but absolute value of sin of n over n square okay now it is positive why because i am taking absolute values okay so now i can take comparison test remember earlier i cannot take because sin n is taking negative values now i can take because i am taking absolute value of sin n okay So I can say that this is less than or equal to one by n square, and which is p. So therefore, we can conclude that since summation one by n square is convergent, so this imply this imply you can say that summation of mod sine n by n square is convergent. Okay, and this imply you can say that summation of sin n over n square, this is absolutely convergent. So this is absolutely convergent. Do you understand? Okay. Yeah. Now let us talk about alternating p series test. Okay, so here earlier we know what is p series uh, summation one by n power p, and we know this is convergent if p is greater than one. Okay, from this we can we can easily conclude that summation minus one power n by n power p, this is absolutely convergent. So this is absolutely convergent for p greater than one. Why? Because the corresponding absolute series is convergent for p greater than one. Therefore, the alternating series will be absolutely convergent for p greater than one. Okay. Now we need to know about when it is conditionally convergent. I hope uh, you must have observed these two problems. That is, summation minus one power n over n. And summation minus one power n over root n, and of course we proved that these two series are conditionally convergent. And if you look at the p values here, here p is equal to one in this case. In the second case, uh, p equal to one by two. So now the question is when. What is the interval in which it is going to be conditionally convergent? Okay, so we can easily prove that it's going to be conditionally convergent in between zero and one. And of course, it is easy to see um, this is going to be uh, divergent if p is negative. Why? Because if p is negative, you just think about it. Summation minus two. Let me just think about minus two. Okay, then it can be written as summation n square. 
So what is limit of n square? Limit of n square is infinite. So it is very clear that when p is negative, it is divergent for sure. Okay. And it is it is going to be absolutely convergent for p greater than one. It's clear. Okay, and we can also prove that it is conditionally convergent in between zero and one. If you if you want proof of this result, you can do one thing. You need to show three conditions of the Leibniz test. First one that a n is positive. That's easy. And you need to show that it is decreasing, right? So you take f of x equal to one by x power p. With that, you can easily prove it. And then limit of nth term anyway becomes zero. So if you're given with n equals to one to infinity, let's say minus one to the power of n, one over uh, I'm taking the fifth root of fifth root of n. What can you say about it? Just Why? P greater than one. Sir. What is P here? Less, less, less than, than one. one. What is P here? Uh, one by. This one can be rewritten like this: minus one to the power of n. And this is 1 over n power 1 by 5. Fifth root, it means n power 1 by 5. Now you tell me. Conditionally converges. Yeah, correct. So this is conditionally converges. Okay, so here we can see the ratio test for uh, alternating series. Whether it's alternate or any, any series. We can apply this ratio test. And, but how we need to apply here is we need to take absolute value of the ratio. It's not the just ratio. Okay. Because if you if uh, let's say if if a n is positive, then definitely the ratio is going to be positive. No issue in that case. We do not have any issue with positive top series. But assume that you know the series is not positive top. So in that case, you can apply ratio test like this. So you take limit of a n plus one over a n absolute value. Okay, this limit is L, and you know that it's going to be absolutely convergent if L is less than one, and it's going to be divergent if if L is greater than one. Okay, and we cannot conclude anything when L is equal to one. So while applying ratio test, if you get L equal to one, then there is a chance of getting uh, conditionally convergence. Okay. All right. Let's let's take a problem on it. Okay. Here is the problem I'm taking. So we need to use uh, ratio test to conclude whether this one is convergent or divergent. So you can see that here a n equals to what? Or absolute value of a n. So the absolute value of a n is going to be n factorial by 2 power n. I hope you can see that a n plus 1. And that's going to be n plus 1 factorial over 2 power n plus 1. Okay, so now I'd like to take the ratio a n plus 1 over a n and then it's absolute value. So that will be n plus 1 times electricity right factorial over 2 power n plus 1 times this is 2 power n by n factorial. I hope this one gets simplified to n plus 1 by 2. Okay, so now let's take the limit. So limit n goes to infinite or a n plus one over a n. So this equals limit n goes to infinite n plus one by two. And what will it be? This will go to infinite. Okay. So since the limit is infinite, you can actually take it as greater than one. So the second case. 
okay when l is infinite or l is greater than 1 so therefore we can conclude that the given series what is the given series so we can conclude that the given series is divergent okay why because in, we applied ratio test and we got the limit is infinite if the limit is infinite definitely can conclude that it is divergent okay so now let us look at the more problems and let's see uh, for what problems we can apply ratio test i hope just now we did this d and when it comes to ratio test uh, yeah i hope you can pick this problem to apply ratio test or you can apply root test also not an issue and this problem you can directly do it because we did just now sin n by n we did sin n by n square now they are taking the alternative uh, form of that and you can conclude that the problem f is divergent how how can you conclude using nth of test Okay, so I hope you try these problems. So now let let me show you the root, ratio, sorry, root test for alternating series. Yeah. So you can see that generally when you take root test, the condition is this: limit n goes to infinite nth root of a n equals to l. So we don't take any absolute uh, terms when when a n is positive. That is the original root test. Okay. But when it comes to alternating series, what we are going to do is we are going to take the absolute value of a here. So we take the absolute value of a and we are going to conclude that if L is less than 1, then it is absolutely convergent. Okay. And if L is greater than 1 or infinite, then it's going to be divergent. Okay, and we cannot conclude anything if L is equal to 1. So this is what the root test for alternating series. Now let's do one thing. Let's take a problem on root test now. now I hope we can we can take this problem easily. Yeah. So here, so if you write the absolute value of a n, I'm assuming the entire term is a n. A n okay. Now I'm taking its absolute value. That's actually uh, nth root of nth root of n. Oh, it's not power n. Okay, so this is actually n to the power of one by n. So if it is power n, the ratio root test is good. But this itself is given as uh, this one, right? But anyway, no need of applying root test here. We can actually directly do using nth term test as n goes to infinite absolute value of a n as limit n goes to infinite it's like 10 to the power of 1 by n it's like 10 to the power of in, 10 to the power of 0 okay and it becomes 1 so which is not equal to 1 sorry not equal to 0 therefore the given summation is divergent okay we concluded this using nth term test not using uh, root test okay so let me remove this part here not to have confusion <coughs> okay so let's let's try this problem now here you can apply root test and of course the ratio test can be applied also okay so first time I'd like to write the absolute value of a n. So that is n square times 2 by 3 whole power n. This is uh, this is absolute value of a n. Now let's take nth root of a n. So nth root of a n, absolute value of a n, that is nothing but absolute value of a n whole to the power of 1 by n. Okay. So if you observe that, that's going to be n squared by 2 by 3 power n whole to the power of 1 by n. Okay. And this is going to be 
So this is n square whole power 1 by n and this is 2 by 3 whole power n by n. Okay, so finally this is what we get n power 1 by n whole square. This one can be rewritten like this and into 2 by 3 that's it. Okay, now let us try to apply limit. So limit n goes to infinite. So nth root of absolute value of a n that would be so limit n goes to infinite n power 1 by n whole square times 2 by 3 and and this equals and you know n power 1 by n limit is 1 i hope we discussed it here okay so this goes to 1 the first one limit is 1 so 1 square times 2 by 3 so we got 2 by 3 and you know that 2 by 3 is less than 1. Therefore, what is the conclusion? If limit of nth root of a n is strictly less than 1, then we can conclude that this series, this series is absolutely convergent. Okay. And we concluded using the root test. And remember one thing, we can also apply ratio test here. This is the problem which is flexible for both root test and ratio test. Okay, I hope you understand these things. So I'll stop it here.